We have Tony Busan to thank for a versatile and useful tool, mind maps. How to use them, he explains in the mind map book and today we'll have a look at that. Welcome to the soft skill channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today I'd like to introduce you to the mind map book by Tony Buzan with Barry Buzan. Tony Buzan was an was a British author, speaker and trainer and his favorite topic was the brain. He invented mind maps, he also dealt with the topic of speed reading and with memory techniques and memo techniques. His younger brother Barry Buzan is a professor emeritus for international relations. Uh, he taught at different universities and he published many books about uh, subjects of international relations. Mind maps were invented, created by Tony Busan in the 1960s and this is his most important book about them. It was published in 1993, the mind map book. He has uh, written several more about them and they are probably also mentioned and used in some of his other works. He has in total written plenty of books according to Wikipedia, more than 120. Now about this book. It is divided into five parts, five divisions. Each contain a couple of chapters and we will have a look at it. As befits the topic, I have created a nice mind map about the book and we will use that. The first division is called Natural Architecture. Here we learn about some basics, some background, we learn about the brain. So we learn a bit about brain research. Now, uh, the book is a bit older and brain research advances pretty quickly. Some of the stuff we have here is probably outdated, but at least I didn't notice any grossly, uh, any things that are grossly wrong. There is some discussion of left and right part of the brain, which is usually not a good sign. It usually ends in rubbish like there are left brain types and right brain types, which is total nonsense sense, but Tony Busan does nothing of the sort. So as I said, it's probably some of it is outdated, but I didn't notice any serious mistakes. Now after we learned about the brain, we move on to the great thinkers. People like Leonardo da Vinci or Albert Einstein, who really made good use of their brains who really used the full potential of their brains. And this begs the question, why can't we all do it? Why are we not all able to use our brain to such an extent? And the explanation given by the Busans is that we use methods, techniques, that don't really work for our brains, that pretty much contradict the way our brains work. For example, our classic approach to note taking as this little note sheet I depicted here is very linear, one bullet point after the next. And this linear way of doing things is not how our brain works. The brain, according to Tony Busan, does something called radiant thinking. We have a basic idea or maybe a sensory impression from which we start and then our brain creates lots of associations and further ideas. It moves in different direction, starts different lines of thought and really goes, goes off into, into a variety of directions. And this is far better visualized, far better depicted by the mind map. 
In a mind map, we have a central concept or theme. In this case, it obviously is the book we are discussing. And from this main concept, different branches emerge, different subtopics, different lines of thinking, different ideas. In this case, we have the five divisions of the book. And these branches split up further, um, create sub-branches as our uh, train of thoughts splits into different ideas, into different subtopics, as you can also see here. So, in the end, on our sheet of paper, we don't just have all of the important aspects and subtopics and whatnot, as we would have in classical note-taking, but we also have an overview of the relationship between the different aspects and topics. We have an overview of the structure of the topic. Division two to four are pretty much practical instructions. Here we learn how to use mind maps. In division two, we get some foundations. Uh, we are getting started and at first we start by doing some small exercises, small brainstorming exercises, where we uh, have a, a, a basic term we start with and then we create associations that we note around it. So we basically create a very simple preliminary mind map and we do this once with words, once with images, and then we move on to very simple basic mind maps. After that, in division three, we learn the rules. Division three is called structure, and here the concept is formalized a bit more. We learn the rules and structures governing mind maps. And this is because, according to the Busans, there are three important A's, three steps in mind maps, and those are accept, adapt, and apply. Uh, at first, we are basically apprentices, we are just getting started, and there we should accept the rules, we should try to create, create mind maps by the book, follow the rules strictly to learn how to do it. And once we have grasped all the basics, once we've moved on to an intermediary, once we have acquired some skill, we can start to um, adapt the rules to our preferences and to our needs, to bend the rules a bit and have some more variety. And once we have really mastered the technique, once we have become masters ourselves, we can further develop the technique, maybe in ways the our old masters, the Busans, didn't even think of, and we can really make the technique our own. So, for starters, we should learn the rules and stick to them, and this is done in this division. And there are quite a lot of rules. We have sections about technique, about layout, we have recommendations, we have things that can go wrong, and each of those have uh, subtopics and further subtopics. Uh, I try to depict this a bit here in this uh, uh, tree with a lot of uh, splits and branches. So. It's a bit overwhelming at first, I have to say. But um, the rules are, are good, the rules do make sense. There are some pretty, pretty good ones. For example, one I like is when you are creating a mind map, you should try to keep the paper um, upright in front of you and you shouldn't uh, turn, turn it. And the text as well you should try to keep as upright as possible. Because what people do and what I frequently do is turning the paper all the time by creating the mind map, by drawing in the different branches and uh, just writing the text as the paper is currently positioned, though the text will end up like upside down at worst case or uh, in, in all, all directions and your Finnish mind map can probably only be read by a yoga master because you have to turn your head all the time. And this is, of course, not a good result, so you should really try to keep it 
upright and keep your text upright. Uh, by the way, one thing I should note here is that I did not strictly follow all of the rules in my mind map. For example, there is a rule that the length of branches and the length of the lines should correspond to the length of the words, uh, words written on them. And as you can see, I frequently wasted a lot of space by making the branches far longer than necessary. So clearly my mind map is not intended as a prime example of how to strictly follow all the rules. Please uh, um, make sure to note that. Further into division three, things get a bit more relaxed when um, our personal style is discussed and here artistic design is very much encouraged by the Busans. Uh, we can really use colors and images and visuals and really get creative and make our mind map uh, look great and basically turn it into a work of art. And I like that. Um, I think Allowing for and encouraging artistic design adds a lot of fun because you can really get creative, have some fun, enjoy the process and maybe create a final result that you really like and enjoy. But uh, this is always a bit of a tightrope walk because on the other hand you always have the risk of intimidating people, of scaring away newbies. Imagine you have just heard about mind maps for the very first time and you do a Google search and some images come up, some depictions of mind maps that are really great works of art created with lots of artistic skill. And you see them and you probably think, oh, I don't have this artistic skill and this is way too much for me. I don't have the tools, I don't have the skills, I don't have the knowledge. So I am probably, mind maps probably aren't for me. I, I better don't research them further. And of course, this would be a shame, but still, I'd say it makes sense to feel free to really use some artistic design and to have fun while working with mind maps. After that, in Division 4, Synthesis, we learn how to really work with mind maps, how to apply them to a variety of problems and uses. So here we learn about different applications on a general, on an abstract level. Like how can I use mind maps for decision making? How can I use mind maps for creative thinking to generate ideas? Or how can I use mind maps for note taking in general? So after division four, we should have a good understanding of how mind, map work, mind maps work and we should be able to use them fairly well. So at this point we might wonder, now that I know about mind maps, that I can use them, what do I do with them? And this is where Division 5 comes in. In Division 5 uses, we learn about different applications, specific applications for mind maps in various areas. There is a personal, family, education, business and professional and we get several examples for possible uses along with some tips and advice. For example, in the personal area, we can use mind maps to keep a kind of diary. In a family, there is a storytelling, which is a kind of game you can do with your children, where you develop a story bit by bit. In education, you can use mind maps for learning as well as for teaching. And here, taking notes is discussed in more detail. For example, we learn how to take notes for books, how to take notes for presentations and so on. Um, then in the business section, we learn, for example, how we can make use of mind maps in meetings to structure the ideas and the discussion and many more. Uh, to 
um, aspects I'd like to specifically point out. First of all, in the education section, in the chapter where note taking is discussed, it's, it's called creating the master mind map. And here we learn about the so-called master mind map. The idea is basically, if you are dealing with a complex topic, you create different mind maps for different subtopics, for different areas, and then you create a master mind map as a kind of index to um, show the general structure and to show the relationship between those different topics and different sub mind maps. And this is a technique that is not just relevant in uh, the area of education, but that is probably helpful everywhere. So you should certainly note that and have a look at that. And similarly, in the business section, there is a chapter called Computers that deals with using software to create mind, map, uh, mind maps. Uh, there is one application uh, that Tony Busan originally had uh, developed and it is presented here with some pictures and so on. Of course, they are pretty outdated by now, but we learn about using software to create mind maps, which is again a topic that is not just relevant in the area of business, but that is probably relevant uh, everywhere. So you should have a look at those two, despite your general areas of interest. And there is a further area of application, which is the future. And this ties back to the discussion of our mistakes in using our brains in Division 1. Here, uh, the Busans hope that using mind maps will help us to become a mentally literate world, that they will help us to really learn how to make full use of the potential of our brains. So much about the book. I have been uh, using mind maps for quite a while and I can't recall where I first came into contact with them, where I first learned about them. But this is the first time I read this book and the first time I really learned about mind maps as uh, they are used by Tony Busan himself. And this was quite interesting because um, he does several things differently than I had done them up to now. For example, when I created mind maps so far, I've always written my terms in small boxes uh, that I connected with lines. And as you can see on my mind map, as Tony Busan does it, is uh, to write the terms directly onto the lines. And also, as you can see, his mind maps have this very organic look where the branches get, get smaller as they uh, branch off into different subtopics and so on, and where everything has this very organic look. And this is also something I didn't know before that was uh, new to me. And <clears throat> also, Busan's uh, mind maps are way more colorful and visually, visually diverse. Uh, use way more images, pictures than I was aware of before. S and al also this idea of artistic design, uh, turning your mind maps bit into pieces of art, that was all new to me. And this is quite interesting because here, uh, mind maps pretty much tie into uh, modern techniques such as sketch notes or graphic recording, also hand lettering to some extent. So they, they go along, they can be combined really well. And I wasn't aware of that before. So uh, you probably, when you um, encounter this book, you are probably prone to say, oh, well, mind maps. Yeah, I, I know about those. I don't need this book. However, if you uh, have a closer look at this book and read the book, you will notice that there is uh, probably a lot of information, a lot of ideas and concepts you don't, need, don't yet know about. And that here we have probably a different approach to mind maps 
than what you've picked up here and there. So it's quite interesting. Um, now, this book is not so much a book to merely read, but it is more of a workbook since you really want to learn the practical use of mind maps. So you might wonder how do I best approach this book? How do I make the best use of this book? And this is also um, discussed a lot, covered a lot in the book itself. For starters, we have an introduction chapter, which is called the mind map book and how to use it. There we get an explanation of how the book is structured, how the chapters are structured, and we get some advice for um, beginners, for intermediate readers, for advanced users. Um, for example, some general advice we get is that after reading the book, we should create a master mind map of the book to, better, better, to get a better grasp of the structure and the topics. And also after a while, we should read the book again, quickly skim through it to refresh our knowledge. And later in the book, as I mentioned before, um, in Division 5, uses in the section about education, there is a chapter where note-taking is discussed in more detail. And there we also get some advice on how to use mind maps to, I'm sorry, to take notes for books. And there we also get some general advice on how to approach a book, which is not surprising since one of Busan's favorite topics was a speed reading. And speed reading usually has two approaches. One is to increase your reading speed in words per minute. And the other is to approach a book in a systematic way with a certain strategy. And we get um, a brief introduction to that. We learn how we can invest 30 minutes before we start reading to get an overview of the book, to um, activate, to gather our previous knowledge and to formulate questions and so on. So um, things are easier for us when we actually start reading. Now, this is pretty late in the book, page 200 something. So we probably won't use it on this book, but it will certainly help us in the future with other similar books. Um, bit of advice, a uh, bit of recommendations I can give. First of all, you should keep in mind that you don't have to uh, read the entire book from beginning to end in one go. It's perfectly all right to take breaks here and there and first practice mind maps, use them, experiment with them and move on in the book when you feel uh, that you are ready for more knowledge, for more instructions. And I think it's also perfectly fine to skip some content here and there. For example, um, Division 3, the part with all the rules and principles, you probably want to skim through that at first and um, read it in more detail later when you have some more uh, routine, some more experience with mind maps. And also um, section uh, division five, the uses there, you probably want to focus on your favorite areas at first and read the ones that are of lesser interest to you later. It's also a good idea to, um, mm, to repeat some sections later, especially again, section three, the rules and principles. Maybe when you have worked with mind maps for a while, you can go back and check which of the rules do I actually follow, which do I not, and should I maybe try to do it and so on. And also part four synthesis is a good division, a division four synthesis is a good uh, section to uh, read again later. Finally, let's proceed to the critique. I already mentioned some things before. Overall, I think this is a very good start to learn about mind maps and to learn how to use mind maps. 
It is a good practical guide. You get a lot of good practical advice here. And the book also creates a lot of enthusiasm for the technique. It really makes you want to work with mind maps and experiment with the mind maps. I think uh, Tony Busan really has a lot of enthusiasm for this technique and this really shows in the book. And as I mentioned before, you really um, get an idea of the original technique, how uh, its inventor Tony Busan really envisioned it, how he did it, and this may be different from what you have encountered uh, otherwise. In regard to readability, comprehensibility, the book is pretty good, though not perfect. The book is well-structured, the chapters are well-structured, there's always a brief introduction, there is a brief summary that um, uh, with a transition to the next chapter, this is all quite helpful. Also, it is well-written, easy to read, easy to comprehend. Um, a bit of a downside is that there are way too many numbered lists, for it, like, like this one. You see the big numbers and each of those has a short sentence or a short phrase and this is used, you encounter them quite frequently and they get tiring after a while. For example, you frequently have benefits of mind maps in whatever context and yeah, as I said, it gets tiring. And those numbered lists are used excessively in Division 3. So Division 3 really is the, the rules and principles. That one really is a bit bumpy, a bit difficult to read. Now, my personal theory is that Tony Busan and, and his brother, they themselves created a big mind map when they came up with a book to plan the different chapters and sections and things they wanted to discuss. And then they wrote the book based on this mind map. And in Division 3, uh, the transition probably didn't go very well. That is my theory, at least. Uh, by the way, talking about uh, mind maps used by the authors, what I uh, found a bit surprising is that uh, throughout the book, um, we have plenty of nice examples of mind maps, but mind maps are never actually used to uh, teach, to describe the topics in the book, which would have been a pretty obvious idea to me. So this was a bit of a surprise, but yeah, it's not a big problem. This edition of the book is very nice. It has a nice, thick, high quality paper, a pretty big print, and nice and easy to read. And we have plenty of uh, colored Im uh, of, uh, images in color. We have uh, plenty of images like this one here uh, called, uh, it's a bit shiny, which is, uh, they are called natural architecture. So pictures of interesting structures that appear in nature that probably inspired the Busans. We have plenty of examples of great mind maps from a lot of different areas. Here we have some artistic ones. Um, so, uh, this really is a nice edition and I think it's worthwhile to get a print edition of this book rather than an ebook. So overall, clear recommendation for this one. I think mind maps are a quite useful, quite powerful, quite versatile tool, also fun to use. I uh, use them myself frequently, like to use them in different areas and want to improve my use of them further, um, further expand my use of them. So uh, this really is a good place to start. When I encounter a nice video, my first associations are clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. This would also be a nice tiny mind map, maybe with a smiley face, because I would be quite happy about it. We will see each other again next week. For today, I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.